From Oersted experiment, it was known that an electric current acts on a magnetic needle, causing it to turn. But then, according to Newton's third law, the magnetic needle must also act on the wire with a current. This reverse effect of a magnetic field on an electric current was studied by a French physicist, André-Marie Ampère. To see how this effect occurs, let's make an experiment. We hang a piece of copper wire on two conductive suspensions, turn on the power and pass a current of 5 amperes through this circuit. If we bring a permanent magnet under the wire with the north pole up, the wire deflects across the magnetic field to the right. This means that it is affected by a force called the ampere force. Let us turn the magnet the south pole up. The direction of the magnetic field has changed to the opposite and now the wire is deflecting to the left. We can change not only the orientation of the magnet but also the direction of the current in the circuit. Previously, the wire over the south pole of the magnet deflected to the left and now it is deflecting to the right. Let us turn the magnet over. Now the wire is deflecting to the left over the north pole. Let's draw how the current, the magnetic field and the ampere force are directed in our experiment. If the direction of the current and the magnetic field are known, the direction of the ampere force can be determined by the gimlet rule. If the gimlet is rotated in such a way that its handle is turned from the direction of the current to the direction of the magnetic field, the gimlet moves in the direction of the ampere force. Let's consider a piece of wire of length L with current I placed in a magnetic field B perpendicular to this wire. A single charge Q moving at speed V is affected by the Lorentz force F, which equals QVB. Let N be the number of movable charge carriers per unit length of the wire. Then the total force acting on all these charges is equal to the Lorentz force multiplied by NL. But the current I flowing through the wire is equal to the product of Q and V. From this we get that the ampere force is proportional to the current, the magnetic field and the length of the wire segment located in the field region. In order to increase the effect of the magnetic field, we take a frame with a hundred turns of wire on it and pass a current of three amperes through it. In the sense of magnetic action, this is like passing a current of 300 amperes through one turn. The magnetic field in this magnet is directed horizontally. We turn on the power and the frame turns crosswise to the magnetic field with its red indicator pointing to the right. If we try to displace the frame, it returns to the vertical position. Let us change the direction of the current to the opposite one and turn on its source again. Now the frame is turning so that the red indicator is pointing to the left. There are semicircles attached to this coil, which will help to switch over the direction of the current every half turn. We install the coil onto the axis Turn on the voltage, give it a push and the coil begins to rotate. In this way we get a DC electric motor and we have made a separate film about it.